Hello, I'm Bruce Shannon, and welcome to part two of my series of static electricity. Now, in today's segment, I want to look at the difference between conduction versus induction, and I want to start with a demonstration using this soda can. By rubbing the PVC pipe, I'm giving it a negative charge, and I'm able to pull the can from one side of the desk to the other. In this case, the electrons in the can move away from the charged pipe. Now let's try it with a positive charge. Once again, we see the can being attracted through the process of induction. This time the electrons in the can are attracted, so they move towards the glass. Now let's take a look at conduction charging. Charging by conduction involves the contact of a charged object to a neutral conductor. If the charged object is positively charged, then the neutral conductor will give up electrons. If the charged object is negative, then the neutral conductor will gain electrons. This time we'll try it with the Van de Graaff generator. The neutral can is attracted to the generator through the process of induction. When they touch, the can gives up its electrons and becomes positively charged. It's then attracted to the electrons in my hand. When it touches my hand, it will gain electrons, become neutral, and is once again attracted to the generator. If I hold it at the base, I can gain back the electrons that the can took away from my hand. We can actually see small sparks from the transfer of the electrons. Now, in the previous video, I was able to move a wooden 2x4 through the process of induction. Now, I can move this metal bar with the same process. So during this process of induction, the PVC pipe is causing a polarization of the charges on the pole. Now it's not changing the amount of charge on the pole, simply causing the electrons to move to the opposite end. Now let's try charging this bar through conduction. I'm going to use my Van de Graaff generator because it's a little bit stronger. I can attract the bar through induction, and if they touch, Well, let's see what happens. They touch, and then it pushes away. Try that again. Touches, and pushes away. The bar is essentially carrying electrons from my hand to the generator. Now, I think we can even set this up so that it alternates between the Van de Graaff generator and the sink faucet. When the pole touches the generator, it becomes positively charged, and then when the pole touches the sink faucet, it gains electrons and becomes neutral again. Here we have induction and then conduction on a small scale with aluminum foil pieces. Let's see that again in slow motion.
And now we'll try it on a larger scale. Here's a piece of aluminum foil hanging down from a meter stick. The aluminum foil gives up its electrons to the positively charged generator and then simply gets more from the atmosphere around it. Now here we have a balloon made of mylar, which we don't normally think of as a metal. But mylar is actually a polyester or a nylon, usually covered with a thin coating of metal. In this case, it's aluminum. Now we can get this surface to conduct just as we have in the other experiments. Now let's see if I can show the difference between charging by conduction versus charging by induction. Now our equipment in this case are two small tuna cans taped together and then glued to a juice container. Same thing here, but on this one I added a couple strands of string. We'll use these two strips as our indication of the charge. In this case it's going to be a negative charge on the vinyl. And in this case it's going to be a positive charge on the acetate. Now in this case, what I want to do is charge the cans by induction, which means I don't want to touch them. I simply want to bring this positive charge near it. And then separate the cans. So this side should be positively charged. We see that it is, it attracts this side, and that means that this side should be negatively charged. And look at that, it pushes it away. So induction did cause the charges on the can to become separate, and once I pulled the cans apart, the cans remained oppositely charged. By touching the cans, I'm actually removing its electrons. So we'll conduct a positive charge onto the cans. And let's test that. It should attract the vinyl, which is negatively charged, and repel the acetate. There we go. Now let's try this one. It also attracts the vinyl and repels the acetate. So both cans are positively charged. What we have here is a setup called the Franklin Bell. It was actually first demonstrated by Benjamin Franklin. Let's try it and see. Once again, our soda can starts off with a neutral charge, but it's attracted to the generator through the process of induction. Once it touches the generator, 
it gives up its electrons and becomes positively charged. Now that the can is the charged object, it's attracted to the electrons in the neutrally charged ball, once again through the process of induction. The ball is actually a basketball covered with aluminum foil grounded to the sink. Now I want to replace the ball with my hand while I ground myself to the sink. Notice that the can is being repelled by the generator. Let me touch it, see what happens. <laughs> Try it again. Well, I hope you enjoyed these demonstrations, and I have more static electricity coming up in the future. One in particular is the bending of a stream of water using a static charge. Now here's the standard demonstration, but I'd like to try some variations. For example, how can we get the stream to be repelled rather than attracted? And what would happen with two streams rather than just one? At this point, I'd like to thank you for stopping in and come back and see me again. All right, bye.